If your church wants to reach more people online, local SEO is one of the most important things you can do. And in today's episode, we're going to break down how your church can do a simple but highly effective local SEO audit. We hope this conversation helps your church reach more people and grow. This is the Reach Right Podcast. Well, hey guys, welcome to the Reach Right Podcast, episode number 104. This is your host, Thomas Costello. And with me, as always, is my co host, Ian Hyatt. What's up, Thomas? Hey, not much, man. Excited to chat today. We're going to be talking about a local SEO audit, how churches do it, and how they can boost your website rankings. So it's all about local SEO today on the Reach Right Podcast. An important conversation, right? Very important. And I think more and more pastors, ministry leaders are familiar with that term. You know, you and I have been doing this for years, working with the churches, and there maybe about you know, five plus years ago, you'd say, pastor, do you know what SEO is and why that's important for your church? And they'd say, no, what is that now? You know, when we ask that question, um, I'd say most pastors have some sort of an understanding about SEO or they know what it is in general. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it probably is helpful if we start out today, we're going to talk mostly about how a church can do an audit or take a look at your own local SEO results and kind of see how you're ranking and see where you can improve and do some of those things. But I think before we jump into that, it might be helpful just to talk about what we mean when we say local SEO, um, SEO, of course, standing for search engine optimization. uh, And what are the different kind of disciplines within SEO uh, and why local SEO might be the most important one for churches? Uh, So um, I guess I'll kind of kick us off here. There's a few different kinds of search engine optimization. There's the traditional, which would be called like an on-page or like a global yeah. SEO. Um, there is managing and mastering your Google AdWords and kind yeah. of advertising, uh, search advertising. And then there's local SEO. Um, yeah. So, and I guess maybe you can kind of walk through some of those distinctions between those three things. And maybe it would be helpful to think of it in terms of on a search engine report or like a what we'd call a search engine results page, the different areas of a search engine result page. Maybe you can t- talk to us a little bit about that, Ian. Yeah, yeah. So I think everyone kind of, when they think about SEO and, and a search page, like you just said, they think of like when they Google, Google something, what comes up, right? And right. Uh, I think the number one, what comes up is what's called the Google Map Pack, right? So that is... Um, basically it's a, it's a list of locations based on the, the address, uh, name and address, phone number, the location of whatever it is you're searching for. If, if you're doing restaurants near me, you see right. those, uh, pop up in, in that list. And, and then you can click, you know, the top three typically are what come up. Um, so again, the example we would use for churches is so if someone does churches in Austin, Texas, right. um, it's going to be top three, uh, based on where you're at and where you're searching from, where these churches are located, those top three come up and then, you know, there's a more places link. Um, so that's the first thing is the Google map pack. And then you have usually above that, if there's an ad, like you just said for a Google ad, those pop up typically above that map pack. And then you have all the other stuff like below, which are like, you know, Yelp listings and all the other stuff. Um, you yeah. know, usually it says like top 10 churches, uh, or it, you know, uh, in Austin, Texas and so on. So that's usually what's all visible on that first page. If that's what you right. were asking. Yeah. yeah. So I, here, here's how I would distinguish it basically. So at the top, usually there's the ads. So these are people that paid to be on the top of the search results when someone does a search for a church. Yeah. Below that, you usually have the map pack. And this is important because it's basically a Google search with an emphasis on local intent. So people that are looking for something near them. So this is common um, if you're looking for, um, if you have a plumbing issue at your house yeah. uh, and you need someone to help with that, Google doesn't want to just show you results for plumbers that are all over the country. Because if right. you are yeah. in Florida, a plumber in yeah. Wyoming isn't very helpful to you. So <laughs> they try to figure out when there's local intent. Uh, and yeah. that's what the local search is. And then below that, you'll have the global search results. So it's something where if someone looks for churches, you might get churches that are nowhere near you, or it talks yeah. more about the history of churches or right, what right. a church is, or the Wikipedia entry for churches. Those kinds of things are what's going to appear usually in the global search 
or the on-page search results. So for churches, because most of us are still operating local uh, expressions of church, now some of our audience probably has online and they're they're really focusing on online right. search. That's important too. But for most churches, the local expression is still the most important way that we do that. And yeah. so a local search is really important. When someone looks for churches in my area, my hope is that my church would come up and then people can kind of experience our website and we can right. link them to that and local SEO and really focusing on that is the way that we do that. That's it. Exactly. No, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's a good way to explain it just to kind of simplify it. Um, so being visible uh, for people looking for churches in your area is very important for a church. Yep, absolutely. So, so now that being said, there is like local search is different. Like ranking on there is different from how you would do that when it comes to the global searches. So the global searches, they were much more keyword focused, whereas right. local searches, they are more focused on uh, proximity uh, and where you are and your prominence and how important your organization is and whether or not it matches the search term. So we'll kind of break this down a little bit. When it comes to ranking on a local search, what Google is trying to do is they're trying to figure out are you in that area? Are, are you yeah. close to the person that's searching? So if you're a block away from a local church, chances are if you do a search for that church, Google would like to show that if yeah. the church is prominent. Now, right. there's something that, that that's a key word I want to focus on is prominence. So yeah. if you are a very large church, for instance, maybe you're the local mega church, there's yeah. a chance that Google will try to give your ministry more ranking in the area. If you have a really big website with lots of content on it, they might show your church, even though you're 10 miles away from a, yeah. someone who has a church within a mile from them because they deem your website website to be very prominent and your ministry to be a prominent one. There's yeah. lots of ways that it, it does that. We'll talk about some of the ways that it does it, but it's usually things like, are you listed in a lot of directories? Uh, do you have a lot of reviews for your ministry? Does yeah. your website have lots of links going to it? Some of those kinds of things we'll dig into a little bit. So yeah. it tries to measure your prominence a little bit. Uh, and then it does take a look at kind of your location and whether or not it matches the search terms there. So uh, that's yeah. kind of how I'd say local SEO and and search engine terms kind of go hand in hand with that. Yeah, no, that's that's good. I think and and using that word prominence and and you know uh, all of those various things that need to be in place for you to be prominent online. It makes me think of what I hear from a lot of churches. They don't want to talk about competition like that. You're in competition with with other churches, right? It shouldn't be a competition. At the same time, you know. It, you do want to be visible, you know, I mean, you would be, you know, up, upset if you were, a, um, I don't know, Lincoln Ridge Baptist and only First Baptist keeps coming up and you can't be seen. Um, right. You know, you also want to be seen as well as the First Baptist Church, right? It is tricky, right? Because we're on the same team. I think like, you know, it's, yeah. it's there, um, you know, most of us are doing the the same work and we're trying to reach people with the gospel. And so it, it is weird to think about it, um, you know, whereas with plumbers, the example we used before, yeah, yeah. I want more business than all the other plumbers. Uh, yeah. But in the end, as a pastor of a church, I don't really, I, I want to I want to be used by God. I, I'd love for people yeah. to get connected to my church, but really my chief goal is they get connected to a church that's teaching right. and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So right. it is kind of a, a, a tricky thing. We don't think of it in terms of competition, but I right. think it is important that we do get the word out there because while we're, we're maybe competing in search with other churches, we're also competing with uh, all kinds of other things that people can be doing on Sunday. And and here's here's something that I found is, is when I was pastoring a church, one of our best keywords that we ranked for was things to do in Madison, Wisconsin. That was something yeah. that we would consistently rank for. And yeah. then we were competing against farmers markets and other events that were happening there. And right. I absolutely want to win that battle with the gospel. So yeah, I think that was something yeah. that was Even really important. I love a good farmer's market. Right? Absolutely. But, uh, but yeah, the guy think the gospel that... That's uh, that food is more important. So yeah, that's it. So well, let's dig in. Let's talk a little bit about yeah. how a church would do a local SEO audit. And as a disclaimer, before we get into this, I want to say the easiest way uh, to do a local SEO audit is to go to reachrightstudios.com slash local dash SEO and put in the name of your church and we'll do a local SEO audit for you at absolutely no charge. There's no yeah. cost. There's no catch. Uh, we'll send it to you. And yeah. uh, that's the easiest way to tackle one of these here. So do 
do that, take advantage of that free resource. We built that tool so that it does all of these things so you can get a really good assessment of where your church ranks in these areas there. So again, yeah. free and no cost. But if you wanted to do it yourself and kind of take a look at some of the factors that we dig into when we do a local SEO audit, uh, we can kind of go through some of those here now. So why don't you kick us off and uh, tell us what the first step in doing a local SEO audit, what would be the first step in that, Ian? Um, so the first thing is uh, your NAP consistency, right? So that that term NAP, um, that's maybe a little less uh, of a known acronym compared to SEO, but it's a part of the SEO picture that stands for your name, address, and phone number. Correct. And you having that consistent across the web. Um, so um, that might sound like a, a, a no-brainer. Uh, yeah, we we know our church's name, address, and phone number. We, you know, that should be online, but it it gets screwed up often, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, it, it's so strange how this happens, but like w with the internet, uh, things tend towards chaos, I would say. So in general, yeah. <laughs> if you just leave things on their own, you start to get inconsistent results with your name, address, and phone number. So here's what we mean by this is that every time your church is ever referenced online, it should always be referenced the exact same way with the exact same phone number and the exact same address because yeah. Google uses that as a factor of measuring the consistency in yeah. how we talk about your church and, and how it's being talked about online. And it always associates that name, address, and phone number with your church and it helps to boost your rankings. So what yeah. tends to happen is that if you pastor First Baptist Church of Austin, Texas, for instance. Yeah. Uh, if if sometimes it's written as FBC Austin right. or FBC Austin, Texas, or First Baptist Austin or First Baptist Church Austin, there's all these different ways that our church might be referred to online. Those yep. are all in Google's mind. It's hard for it to distinguish. And sometimes it'll think that this is like 11 different churches. There's yeah. First Baptist Church, there's First Baptist, there's First Baptist Austin. There's all These are all different organizations. And so it kind of says, confusing signals when it's trying to rank and figure out how prominent your church actually is there. So what you need to do is you need to do an audit of your site uh, and then all kinds of other linking sites out there and make sure that every time any directory or your yeah. site or social media platform, every time it refers to your church, that it uses the same name, address, and phone number. And I'm talking yeah. about really specific. So like with your phone number, if sometimes you have parentheses around the area code and other times you have dots between the numbers and sometimes you have dashes, those can all be confusing signals. So yeah. be very consistent in the way you write your address, your church name, your phone number, and make sure it's the same across all platforms out there. That's one of the yeah. most important things we do when we run our automated local SEO audits for churches. Yeah. It checks your NAP consistency. So step one is make sure you're really consistent on that. Yeah, and, and doesn't it, isn't it funny how many churches we know they have acronyms? They I just spoke with a church yesterday that uh, they were va something like Valley Ridge Assembly, and uh, yep. they've branded themselves as VRA. So you know, if someone goes online and says, "Oh, we went to VRA Church uh, on Sunday, uh, and we loved it," or whatever, but just because they spelled that and said that online, it it screws all this up. So it's really important. Yeah, absolutely it is. So next thing I guess in doing an audit, I'd say the second step is really dialing in your Google business profile yep. and make sure that's really set up well. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, so up until a couple of months ago, it was called Google My Business. Yeah. Uh, they changed it just recently to Google Business Profile. Same thing. Uh, but yeah. what this is, this is, it's funny, they, they've been through so many different name iterations. Uh, yeah. This is what Google Plus was. If you remember maybe eight or nine yeah. years ago, yeah. Google brought out Google Plus and everybody yeah. was trying to think maybe we should get away from Facebook and yeah. do Google Plus instead. And so I had a Google Plus profile. They kind of can the personal level of it. Yeah. And it turned into something mostly for organizations and businesses. And so Google Business Profile is what it's become today. And really, this is just a place where you can get all of your key details about your church really set in stone. This is kind of the gospel for Google. When they think of what your church is, this is the reference that they're going to use.
issues of yeah. what the absolute actual name of your church, your location, your business hours, your website, your social media links, photos of your church, videos of your church, all yeah. these things go into your Google business profile. So getting that real dial, really dialed in and making sure that that's consistent and doing an yep. audit of how you look there, I think that's really important. So you could just go to, um, you could just Google the name of your church and it'll take you, as long as you've claimed your Google business profile, it'll take you to a link for it and you can verify all your information on there. So yeah, yeah. that would be the next step I'd say. You said a good uh, word um, in doing this. It's getting it dialed in. Um, I talked to so many churches that most churches have actually taken this step to get their Google business profile set up, yep. but they don't go through it in detail and get it fully dialed in. There's a lot of steps and a lot of things to to make sure you've done right. So it's not just a getting in there and a couple little things and you're done. Yeah. Um, so there's some there's some detail to it. I'd put an emphasis on on the pictures. Like I think photos yeah. are super important because you got to remember when someone does a local search, if you really dial in your Google business profile, that's what the results are going to show when someone sees you in the map pack. And so yeah. if the if the pictures are just a you know, some funny snapshots of the back of people's heads in worship, uh, or, you know, uh, a picture of a, of a potluck table, uh, from your last event that you guys had, that's not going to be something that someone says, yeah, I want to make sure I come to this church. But if it's yeah. engaging pictures of people, the term we use is we're trying to do pictures of people caught in the act, doing the values of your church. Yeah. I yeah. think that's the kind of imagery you want to use on there. So getting all those things really figured out and maybe even doing some updates on your Google business profile, yeah. that really helps to boost your rankings there. That's good stuff. Yeah. Easy to kind of set it and forget it, but uh, yep. worth doing an audit for. So next one that's really important I'll tackle is uh, getting reviews and testimonials. Mm. Uh, this might seem a little awkward or uh, may... Um, make pastors uncomfortable, maybe asking for reviews, online reviews and testimonials. But, you know, it really is important. Google looks for these things. And and honestly, I, you know, I, I think it's not too tough to ask for this. I mean, you probably want to be careful the way that you do it. And, and uh, it's probably something better to to ask uh, your uh, people who have visited the church for the first time or members that af you know during a service or after the service you mention it rather than having your staff go on there and pretend to, mm -hmm. to, to do you don't want to you know be dishonest with it of course um, but these are very important so asking for people to say hey you know and it could be as easy as you saying did you enjoy this service today what did you like about it could you go online and give us a shout it makes us more visible to people looking for churches in the area nothing wrong with that. Yeah, just think of it as the way we do testimonies now. This is the online version of testimonies, and yeah. they help people kind of uh, associate some level of credibility with your church. Yep. And so any yep. way we can do that, I think it's really valuable. So um, yeah. as to the idea of asking for it, I'll give a little bit of advice on this, is that I think in general, you should ask people to do reviews of your church. Um, Google, they explicitly state that you should be soliciting reviews. They want you to ask yeah. people to give you reviews. That's totally within their terms of service. And so don't feel like I'm gaming the system if I ask people for reviews. Right. You are encouraged to do that. Restaurants are supposed to do it. Plumbers are supposed to do it. Churches should be doing it too. So ask your people to do it. Um, yep. Other platforms, specifically platforms like Yelp, they mm -hmm. discourage you from soliciting reviews. So if they notice that you've, you've got one review over the last six years, but then off after one Sunday, you get 14 reviews at your church, yeah. they're going to start to flag that and say, well, you know, maybe there's some kind of gamesmanship going on yeah. here. This yeah. isn't quite legit. So know your audience. I would argue that Google reviews are now the most valuable, especially when we're talking about the map pack. But any review site, whether it be Facebook reviews or Yelp reviews, they're all valuable in kind of building your credibility there. So uh, asking people to do reviews, I think in general is a good idea, just when it comes to Yelp ones, exercise a yep. little bit of caution, but these are so yeah. important. Yeah. That's a exactly good differentiation. Right so, yeah. Uh, next one up, I think it's important to look at directories and citations. Uh, so this is uh, where online there are several, uh, dozens I'd even say, yeah. of relevant directories that organizations can be listed in. Uh, mm. So these are very common ones that we know of, like your search engines, Google and Bing and Yahoo, yeah. uh, things like Yelp and yep. Facebook and Instagram. And these are they're all function as 
those directories where you can yeah. have a church account, your church has a name, address, phone number, those things we talked about before. There's also all kinds of other ones that you don't even think about. Like there's uh, directories like Postmates and Eight Coupons uh, yeah. and uh, Yellow Pages. If you know, Data .com. Axle. I saw Data Axle. Data yeah. Axle. Yeah. So there's there's ones that we don't even really pay much right. attention to, but they are still directories that yeah. are online, and Google still references them. And this is about your volume play. So. The idea is it's important to get your church listed in as many online directories as possible. You focus on the really prominent ones. You're, yeah. you're obviously Google and Facebook yeah. and Instagram and uh, those, you know, Yelp, yeah. those kinds of things are really important. Right. But then the more the merrier when it comes to other directories. Now, there are services that do this. This is a service that we offer. We have we help yep. churches get onto 77 different directories. We keep those directories up right. to date. But making sure that your NAP, like we talked about, your name, address, and phone number are consistent on those and that your church has an account and is listed on as many directories as possible is really an important uh, and great way to kind of boost your local SEO rankings there. Yeah, no, that's good. Good. I'll get the next one, uh, which is also very important and maybe kind of forgotten is your website speed yep. determines uh, how how strong your SEO and your visibility and your rankings go. So um, I come across so many, you know, we evaluate websites on a daily basis. I come across so many sites that just load slowly for various reasons. And uh, you want to make sure that your website speed is is good. And this also comes with having good website hosting. Um, but yeah, you got, it's a, what is the, the tool that Google provides where you can easily go do this is um, there, it's page speed insights tool. Is that what it yep, is? That's right. Yeah, yeah that's exactly yeah, right. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Google tells you how fast they think your website is and how fast yeah. things are running there. And so if you are able to to use that tool, it'll tell you exactly how they see your web presence and then you can uh, kind of make the necessary adjustments. So if I were to give two places that people should take a look at when it comes to their page speed, there's two big things you can look at. Number one is your image size on your site. Yeah. So in general, this is one of the biggest mistakes we see is that churches use images that are too large or too high quality for web browsing, specifically for mobile browsing. Yeah. Uh, page speed is even more important when it comes to mobile browsing. So I see this error a lot is that people use, they, they'll they resize their images like in their actual dimensions on the site, but they won't actually change from like the very large, even like raw image size that they started with there. So yeah. your images should never be more than 100, 150 kilobytes on a website. Uh, and sometimes I run across churches that have 700 kilobyte images and okay. that's just way yeah. too big. It takes, you know, five times as long to yeah. upload something or to download something like that. So it slows down your page speed. So that's yeah. item number one that, that's probably the easiest to correct. Secondly, and this is something that should be a no brainer, but not all hosting is the same. Uh, so right. when you choose your web host, page speed should be one of the most important factors in choosing one. And yeah. so there are lots of hosting options that are $2 a month, $3 a month, yeah. and they advertise unlimited storage. Really, yeah. it is so true that you get what you pay for in this area. And yeah. it is important that you really try to, to work at that and find, it doesn't mean you have to be the most expensive kind of hosting, but know that when you're doing a $2 a month host, you're not going to probably get the kind of page speed that you need on right. that there. So I think that's really important as well. One little bonus one too, is I think you probably want to look at where you have, this is a little bit on the technical side, but your name servers set up. So I would okay. strongly recommend, there's no cost to this, but I would strongly recommend that churches look at a service like Cloudflare uh, uh -huh. that kind of provides your DNS service for you there. And it just really helps you to speed up your requests quite a bit. It can knock off as much as 25% of your load times on things. So wow. a service like Cloudflare, Flare, we use it for reach right, um, doesn't yeah. cost anything. So uh, we don't have any kickbacks or any kind of, it's not a sponsored right, uh, sure. placement or yeah. anything in this episode. <laughs> we recommend yeah. Cloudflare as a really good solution for something. There like you go. That. That's good. Yeah. So last but well, not uh, least, yeah, I'll wrap us up with uh, on-page SEO. Uh, so this still does matter. On-page SEO is really important. And what we mean by that is 
the actual content that's on the pages of your website. Yeah. It is very hard to rank in a local search if your church website has no content on it. Uh, yeah. if, if you Every time you put up a sermon, you just have a title of the sermon and then you have a video of your sermon, but there's no text in there. It's really hard for you to rank uh, yeah. for those search terms that are on there. So you can't just ignore what we would call on-page SEO. So take some time to think about what are those keywords that people are looking for in my community? Well, it's going to be things like churches in Honolulu or yeah. churches near me or churches in my area, right. um, Christian ministries in my area, yeah. youth ministries in my area. So these yeah. kinds of search terms, don't stuff them onto your website. Don't just kind of put them yeah. anywhere. It used to be you could totally game Google's algorithm. I remember and you get the that. bottom of your site, people would just list churches in Austin, churches in yeah. Round Rock, churches yeah. in Georgetown, churches in Pflugerville. They'd put all the sub communities there yeah. and then they'd do church and churches and Christian churches and every variant. Yeah. That doesn't work anymore. You no. have to do it in normal human speak. Uh, and yeah. uh, if you're in an English speaking area, you want to use normal conversational type of English right. or conversational Spanish if you're a Spanish speaking church or whatever it would be. But use your keywords and focus a little bit on what's called your on-page search engine optimization. That helps to build your rankings as well. Anything to add yeah. to that? No, I think you you hit most of it. And I would just say, yeah, Google is wised up to, um, like when you said, there a lot of, a lot of, not just churches, businesses alike tried to game the system and just throw all of those keywords and those um, those titles on their website. You just, you can't do it anymore. And you want to, uh, Google's just really smart and they know a lot and you just want to adhere to good practices there. So that was good. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I'll end with this too. Again, this is a lot of work and I would strongly yeah. recommend that you take advantage of our totally free local SEO audit. It's all yeah. automated. So we've built this whole system so that it sends it right to you. Uh, it does take, you know, it's actually doing and crunching a lot of numbers. We use a lot of our SEO software to kind of pull the ranking. So I know you do these a lot for uh, for people. Yeah. How long, it takes what, 30 minutes or so usually, Ian, yeah. to get it? Yeah, about 30, 30 minutes and it'll notify you when it's finished. So you can now, start it and walk away. It doesn't away take and... them 30 minutes, right? If you do no. this audit, yeah. you, you put <laughs> yeah, in, no. you fill out the form in about 30 seconds. Correct. But then, the actual software has to do its work and it really is right. crunching uh, numbers and information and algorithms and doing reports yeah. and audits. So it does all of this for you. But yeah, if you were to do all the stuff that it does yourself, it would take oh, you gosh. 30 days. Uh, 30 so this days. is a much, yeah, yeah, yeah. much yeah. better solution. Good, so Good point of clarification there. Yeah. All you have to do is go on our website and put your info in there and then it'll notify you when the report's done. Yeah. Yeah. So. It does it just based on your church name too. So you don't even really need to enter a lot yeah. of your information you just put in your church name. So First Baptist yep. of Austin, uh, yep. it will see what the internet is saying about you and it'll do a yeah. local SEO audit. So reachrightstudios.com slash local dash SEO. Uh, there's a big button on there. Go ahead and click that. It'll get it for you. I hope this has been helpful for you yeah. on kind of some of the things we think about when it comes to local SEO and how to do an audit. Uh, if it has been helpful, let us know in the comments below. Um, let us know kind of how you're thinking about local SEO. Uh, that would be really helpful to us. Also, like like, subscribe, do all those things. It helps us to get the word out there about the Reach Right podcast. We want to thank you guys so much for being a part of our Reach Right family, and we hope to catch you next week.